Hi everyone, I have an update on my 12 volt generator. You'll notice over here that my 5 inch alternator pulley is off and I have the 2 and a quarter ish inch pulley on there. I also have this smaller 3L 340 belt, 34 inch, 3L uh, half inch ish diameter uh, width belt. And over here on the engine, uh, this isn't tightened right now, but on the engine, I have the same 4 inch, uh, 3.95 actually, diameter pulley on here with a smaller belt on here. It is a 3.2, I think, pitch pulley on that one. And the alternator over here is uh, something like a 2 ish pitch. Anyway, the alternator spins much faster in this configuration. Now, I had trouble getting the output current that I really wanted out of this alternator. In my last video, it was uh, about 80 amps if I ran the engine at full speed and about 70 amps if I ran it at around the speed that I wanted to run it at. And that wasn't really acceptable to me. Uh, also, the alternator that I was using had some minor issues with it. Um, one thing was the bearings weren't perfect and the alternator was very, very old. Hadn't been used in a long time and I suspected it was an 80 amp model. So I sold that alternator, that the 10SI alternator that I started with since it's of no use to me and it could be useful for somebody else in an actual vehicle. So I sold that and ended up buying this alternator. This is also a 27SI from my local auto parts store and this one actually cost me less than that 10SI did. Uh, I guess with an online coupon and other such things you can get these pretty cheap. So I was happy with that. This is also a 100 amp model like the last one. And I found out after I hooked it all up that this one performs the same as that other one did. It, uh, it's about 5 amps more, which is a slight improvement, but that's just manufacturing tolerance. So that means that the other alternator that I had was already a 100 amp model, which uh, was kind of disappointing. So I tried this setup here. Uh, I didn't have to buy anything for it. I had all the parts already. I just uh, zipped off the 5 inch pulley, stuck this one on, and replaced the belt with this 3L style belt instead. I also had to change the pivot point down here so that the belt was the right length, but minor details. And uh, I thought, well, if I spin the alternator faster, maybe I'll get more amperage out of it. And indeed, in this configuration, with the alternator spinning some, something like twice as fast as the engine, uh, actually I think it's 40% faster. Anyway, with the alternator spinning much faster than it was before, twice as fast as it was before with the other setup, I now get basically 100 amps out of the alternator. However, because the alternator is spinning this much faster, it is also quite a bit less efficient than it used to be. And my engine over here labors pretty hard uh, when this thing is running. Also, I can't adjust the output current of the alternator by changing the engine RPM because it's always spinning fast enough to generate 100 amps, or very near to it. So it's not really a permanent setup, but it does confirm that this alternator is a 100 amp alternator. And I was going to let it run that way for a while to see how hot the alternator got, but I couldn't actually do that because this belt was very tight at the time. I put a, a big pry bar in pry bar in here and really tightened it up really well. Uh, but I couldn't keep this belt from slipping. It's just not an appropriate belt for this much torque. Um, this little 3L belt just can't handle it. You'd have to have a, a really, really high tension on it. And it's not going to last. It's hard on bearings and such. Uh, I could potentially put the 4L belt on here, but this sheave isn't designed for it and it doesn't fit properly. I don't want to damage my belt anyway, so what I did instead, because apparently I want to turn the alternator a little bit faster than I was, what I did instead is, just a second here, ugh, is I bought this. Yeah, this project's turning into a bit of a money pit, but uh, it wasn't too expensive. It's also a TV Woods pulley, just like my last one. I bought the same brand because I'm really impressed with this. It's a very good quality. Uh, cast iron pulley. Looks like this one they had to drill some out to balance it. Um, and also it says right on here, you may not be able to read it in the light, but max RPM, I think it's 5050. Um, so it's well within range yet even in this larger diameter and arm style of what the engine can take. Uh, a lot of other ones are rated lower, so this is pretty good. Finish is nice and it's made for a 3L or 4L belt. Anyway, so this is a 6-inch rather than a 5-inch pulley. It's a fair amount larger, 
I can put that on, it'll spin the alternator about 30% faster than my other one when you consider the belt pitch in there. And allow me to use the 4L belt, not this 3L belt, which I can't keep from slipping without making insanely tight. And this 5 inch billet aluminum alternator pulley that I have is also a 4L one, so uh, it's not a problem at all to keep it from slipping with the proper belt. So I'll just put that belt on there and give this thing a try again. Hopefully I can now get the desired 80 amps out of the alternator. But uh, we'll have to see. I'll hook it up and uh, see how it works. Also, as I mentioned, this engine was laboring pretty hard uh, with this inefficient setup like I have here with the small, small diameter and high speed on the alternator. So uh, with this a better setup, which is basically a one-to-one, -one, just like I wanted to start with, uh, ratio, hopefully everything will work out okay. I'll have to uh, put this on here and find out. Good news! I ran my setup with all of the appropriate diagnostic equipment here for another 20 minutes or so and uh, tried a few various things and I really couldn't be happier with how it runs. I did put on this larger 5 inch diameter pulley like I said I would. There's still a 5 inch pulley over here in the alternator and I did buy a longer belt. The previous belt that I had was just a standard black one. Uh, this is a Kevlar reinforced belt so this is a far higher quality belt and I needed one that was two inches longer anyway, so I just bought this one. You can get the better quality belts, this one only costs two bucks more than the cheap ones, so yeah, why not? I should have just done that in the first place. But the setup, as I mentioned, worked extremely well. First of all, with the alternator spinning this much slower than it was in my other test where I used this small alternator pulley, the alternator is far more efficient. You can tell that quite easily because the engine here does not labor much at all powering this. And the output, because it's spinning faster than it was with the 4 inch pulley on the engine, is right up in line with what I want. Uh, if I take the uh, throttle on the engine and put it all the way up, it will give me 100 amps out of the alternator. Uh, at uh, 2500 RPMs it gives me 90 amps, and at idle, which is 1800 to 2000, it still gives me about 70 amps of output. And at all of those configurations, this engine doesn't have any trouble at all turning the alternator over. There's still a fair amount of governor left on it. So it seems to be very well matched for this alternator. So there still are a few problems with this setup. One of them being the board that this is mounted to isn't really sturdy enough. I'll have to reinforce that with some L channel, channel or C channel or something. Uh, because this three quarter inch MDF, although extremely heavy and very, very strong actually, isn't strong enough for this. There's just too much vibration and uh, it bends a little bit, bounces around. So I need to reinforce that. Some of this cabling, obviously, I need to do something a little bit more permanent with, but it seems to work just fine that way. And just like I planned from the start, five inch pulley here, five inch pulley here. And that is the correct ratio. Uh, one to one. So that's what I should have done in the first place. I tried direct drive first with a coupler and that coupler failed so I went back to the standard belt drive with some specialized pulleys. And this setup does work although it's just kind of a pain. It's larger, it's more dangerous, you can get your fingers stuck in it whatnot. Um, I really don't like it as much but it's what I had to resort to unfortunately. But it does work very well. This alternator <clears throat> while pulling 90 amps continuously, still only got to about 70 Celsius um, on my thermocouple here. It stays very, very cool, so there's really no trouble at all. All the cabling stayed nice and cool, and uh, this engine cools extremely well. It's, it's made very well for cooling, um, so it's not an issue either. But uh, this whole setup should be quite reliable. Engine alternators last for a couple thousand hours. Uh, this is a little bit higher stress, so it's probably only going to last a thousand or so, but that's as long as an engine will last anyway, so really this should be quite reliable, I think. But I have some more work to do to clean it up and such. I just wanted to give this little update of my pulley size change and say that if you're setting something like this up, the 27SI alternator works out very well for this, and a direct drive or one-to-one -one ratio on your engine to the alternator is about the right ratio. Alright, I'm going to go back here and mention one thing about the pulley sizes. One to one ratio seems to work very well for this setup. However, you do have to be careful about pulley diameters. 
And if you're watching my channel, you're probably interested in some of the technical things. Most people aren't, but uh, if you are, go ahead and watch this. And it uh, is probably pretty obvious to many people once you actually think about it, but thinking about it is what a lot of people don't do. So the alternator pulley over here is usually about two inches, two and a half, somewhere in that range for V-belts. And if you want to do a one-to-one -one ratio, the obvious solution is just to put a two-inch pulley on your engine. And that will work. However, there's some rather straightforward problems with that. One of them is that this engine, for example, has about nine foot-pounds of torque maximum. Uh, that's what it's rated for. In reality, you're probably around seven. But that's seven average torque, foot-pounds of torque. Now, if you had a 12-inch uh, radius pulley on here, which would be a 24-inch pulley, then you would have one pound of force on this belt. And you need to have enough friction on this belt drive so that it can transmit one pound of force to this belt without slipping. And that wouldn't be any problem whatsoever on a 24 inch pulley. However, if you go down to a 2 inch pulley, now you need a very great amount of force on this belt. And you have to make sure that this belt can transmit that much force without slipping. And we're talking about going from 24 inch to 2 inch, so that's 12 times the torque. So 12 times 9 foot pounds, that's a lot of force to be putting on a belt. For one, belts don't take that much kind of force very well. Uh, it, they're on this side, it's the uh, tension side. It pulls it along, slips and stretches in the pulley, comes over here, it's a lot looser. And uh, so it gets stretched apart, gets pulled back together, stretched apart, pulled back together and the belt gets stressed quite a bit. In addition to that, you need to have it extremely tight in order to transmit to that much force on this belt, otherwise it'll slip. So you end up wearing your bearings and whatnot, and it just doesn't work out very well. So the only real solution to this that's reliable and long-term is to use a large drive pulley. And pretty much all engines do have a relatively large drive pulley for that reason. However, if your alternator spins too fast, it gets inefficient. And that's why I have this large pulley on this side. <clears throat> and I really don't see a way around this. You need to have relatively large diameter pulleys to get this done. Another problem is that these heavier belts, which can take this sort of load for long term, uh, they don't uh, go around uh, small pulleys very well. Um, so I, I think a 4L belt really is more appropriate for this than the standard 3L belt size. Uh, but uh, one more thing to consider yet, beyond just the average torque, is that these four-stroke engines have a very reciprocal uh, torque characteristic. Uh, they're four-cycle, right? So only one of those cycles actually generates power. The other three consume power. So all of that torque gets generated for one quarter of the time. It generates a huge amount of torque and then it doesn't generate any. It actually consumes some and the alternator drives the engine for the other three cycles. And then it has a big torque pulse again and then it just idles for the other three cycles and consumes power once again. So you really have a very very high stress on this belt for during that one quarter cycle. It's a lot more than the average torque. So it, it's pretty important to have a large pulley in your engine and uh, Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that, some of the technical details. Uh, you can think about that yourself and come to your own conclusions on it, but uh, that's just some of my reasoning for why I have this setup with a 5-inch pulley here and a 5-inch pulley in the alternator. Anyway, I think that'll end this segment. Uh, I'll probably have more later. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see, but uh, thanks for watching.